Um, but and I heard I heard it from the Lord. But then I also know it now because of what I know. <laughs> You're going to talk about tonight for a long time. Oh, yeah. I mean it. This people's heart is waxed gross. Their ears are dull of hearing and their eyes, they have closed. If you can close your eyes, you can open them. Amen. Lest at any time they should see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their heart, and should be converted any time, I should heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and blessed are your ears, for they hear. Say it. My ears are blessed. My eyes are blessed. But 22 years ago, I came to faith a radical conversion experience. And it changed everything about my outlook and my life. And within a year, I found myself in full-time ministry working for the church where I got saved. And I was door knocking, giving the gospel to every single family in our suburb, which was about three and a half thousand homes. It took me and my wife eight months to speak to every single person in our, in our suburb about Jesus Christ. And that was 21 years ago. And I remember, I've never told you this, Brother Kenneth, that before we used to go out in the morning to do this evangelization, door knocking, we used to watch this crazy Texan preach the gospel. Now, I will, I, I, I'll go ahead and tell you this now. Don't, don't get disturbed because he said three billionaires. Now, I don't, I don't want you to get disturbed because... Uh, since I'm one of them, it'll only leave two more. <laughs> no, now, wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. Of course, I'm saying this with a smile on my face, but I'm serious as I can be. Because I was born again, spirit-filled, and a evangelical Pentecostal church. But the call that we got to Italy was the call from Rome. That's well, how it, that's let started. me back up a little bit. Why would the Catholic Church ask an Anglican from South Africa to go okay. to... Well, I'd have to there. back up to the... <laughs> uh, during the 90s, I was teaching... My wife's Italian. And during the 90s, I was teaching in evangelical Bible colleges in Italy. Okay. And uh, we had some... Uh, not known to me, we had some students in our colleges who were, were actually charismatic Catholics. Interesting. So they took the word back to the Catholic Church that there was this uh, evangelical who preaches from the full counsel of God because I was trained in a, an, evangel an evangelical but an interdenominational seminary, Bible college. In Rhema, was it? It was, yeah, for three years. So me and my wife prayed in 1992 in my grandmother's bedroom. Nobody knew about this prayer. We said, Lord, if you want us to leave South Africa, we will leave on one condition, that we, we come to Italy, but it must be through the Catholic Church.
And when I saw that, I realized that I'd given my life to a good cause because it wasn't just some p political diplomatic maneuvering of the Catholic Church to try and get us all to become one big thing. They really wanted their people to come to faith. Does that mean that one has to, do the Catholics still believe that, that you have to go to a priest to get God's forgiveness of your sins? Even if God's doing the forgiveness, do you have to go to the priest? That is the Catholic Church's teaching because it, it is a priest that is able to hear your sins and to pray for you and to, for you to receive your forgiveness. Is that the Anglican teaching? That's certainly not the Protestant teaching. No, it's not. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all. But you've been saying something, do you, well, let's about the term Protestant. Mm. Is, that, is that a term you like? Well, I don't particularly like it because it's not really accurate, especially now that we're living in a post-Protestant era. It's like you're saying you're a racist even though you, don't, you live in a country that no longer has an apartheid system in place. The Catholic Church and the Lutheran Federation worldwide signed a document accepting and redefining the definition of justification, stating that we are saved by grace through faith alone and not by works. I was working in Italy with the Catholic Church. My wife was a charismatic Catholic. My children were going to Catholic school, so we raised our kids Catholic. Charismatics, Pentecostals. Evangelicals. <laughs> Jesus was all of those, you know. But he was also evangelical because he said, you have to be born again. It is written. He was also the contemplative. He was also the charismatic. How much of Jesus do you want? Do you only want one denomination of Jesus? Jump in, get it all. And this is history that we've got a Pope who recognizes us as brothers and sisters, speaks to us as brothers and sisters, and has sent a message to us. And you'll see what the message is about. We are living in an incredibly important generation. I believe that God has brought me here to this year's Ministers' Conference in the spirit of Elijah. Let me explain. If you look carefully, the spirit of Elijah was on John the Baptist to turn the hearts of the sons to the fathers. To prepare the way for the Lord. And we know that prophecy always has a double fulfillment. And we know that Elijah will come before the second coming as well. Hello, yes. I'm calling to find out about a patient that was um, admitted to your hospital on the 20th after a motorcycle accident, um, Anthony Palmer. I want to find out what his status was. Right, just a minute. Anthony Palmer. Um, what's his date of birth? Oh boy, I don't, I don't know his date of birth. All right, where does he live? Oh, he lived in uh, Wilkshire. I I'd need either a correct date of birth or a correct address, I'm afraid, before I could tell you where this patient is. Yeah, sure. It, the the address is. Uh, hold on a second. Yeah, 17 Hornbeam Road, Trowbridge, Wiltshire. Oh, right. And are you a relation? He was a, he was a bishop. Oh, right. Right. It looks like he came in but was discharged. So, so, so he's not here any longer. Anthony Palmer was discharged from the hospital? Yes. Came in on the 20th. And it looks like he went out on the 20th. Did he, it doesn't say he's anywhere else in the hospital. Did he, did he die or did he actually walk out of there? 
Well, it doesn't say he's dead. Well, yeah, then she, she, she just put me over to somebody else and she said she couldn't find... And then he gave... Yeah, he, he put me back to me because, you know, he's not having an operation today. That that He's been discharged from this hospital. So on Sunday, July 20th, after a motorcycle accident, I was wondering, what is his condition? Is he still in the hospital or has he been discharged? Right, stay with me, sir. Um, do you have uh, Mr. Thomas' uh, date of birth or address? I have his address, yes. Okay, um, could I have that, please? It, yeah, it, I've got uh, a number of Anthony Palmer's listed. Okay, it's 17, Horn B, H O R N B E A M, Road. Trail Bridge, Wilshire, United Kingdom. Okay, thank you, sir. Right, okay. From what I've got listed, um, he has been discharged. You're going to talk about tonight for a long 